can't survive. Chinese social media is flooded with cries of lament as youth unemployment reaches 50%. Finally, can't hold on any longer. Over 4,000 design institutes in China are collectively unemployed. China's real estate company's crisis hit the home furnishing industry. Oppen Home Furnishing closed 536 stores. I may not be able to survive because I just lost my job and completed the resignation procedures. Today is my last day of work. People say that 2024 will be difficult, with many large companies laying off employees. But I didn't expect to be laid off myself. In the morning, I went to work happily. But in the afternoon, the boss urgently called everyone to a meeting and announced that the work would end today. This woman said that everyone is discussing what to do next. It is difficult to find a job outside. A female colleague just gave birth to her second child. Everyone is saying that finding a job is challenging in their own way. Thinking of her fixed monthly expenses, mortgage, water and electricity, food, drink, necessities and credit card installment payments, the sudden unemployment really caught people off guard. Today is the 35th day of my unemployment. I thought I could quickly find a job after being laid off, but reality dealt me a blow. I don't have much money on hand, and my lease is about to expire, so I want to secure my next job quickly. This month, I've attended many interviews across various roles, and my expectations are constantly declining. The longest journey I took was 50 kilometers across the entire city. To save money, I bring my own water and buy bread to get by, but there are simply too many unemployed people now. Today is my first day of job hunting after being fired. When I left the house in the morning, I took a few deep breaths to cheer myself up. I went to three companies, but the positions and pay were very poor. After a whole day, I gained nothing and felt very lost. Walking home alone, my feet felt like they were filled with lead, and every step felt heavy. College graduates who have just entered society are also facing the dilemma of graduation equals unemployment. It is said that the post 00s generation will transform the workplace, but in the end, they can't even enter it. Family, I can't find a job at all. I studied hard and became a 985 graduate student, but I still can't find a job. When I was young, I thought I would be someone great when I grew up. Now I've grown up, but why do I feel completely useless? I am really going crazy. I went to college in vain. I studied for over 10 years for nothing, only to waste my parents' hard-earned money in my youth. What's the point of going to college? What's the point of earning a doctorate? I can't even find a job. I used to be like most people, thinking that studying hard and reading more would lead to a good job, but now? I went from having nothing to being penniless and lost. I don't even know where my future lies. It is understood that this year, there are as many as 11.7 million college graduates in China. Many people reveal that the actual employment rate for college students this year is about 50%, which is lower than last year. Finally, can't hold on any longer, over 4,000 design institutes in China are collectively unemployed. At the weekend, a friend from a distant design institute reached out to me on WeChat, expressing his frustrations. He shared that, despite his best efforts, he simply couldn't hold on any longer. His company was about to shut down, and he was planning to return home, back to his family. For a long time, they had been paying him a modest 2,000 yuan per month. But now, it seemed the financial strain was simply too much. This friend graduated from a prestigious institution, Shanghai's Tongji University, one of China's top design schools. Yet despite his impressive background, he's at a crossroads, uncertain of his next steps. His experience and skill are centered on designing, but he finds himself at a loss, unsure of what else he could do. Given our close relationship, we had an honest, in-depth conversation. He confided that the design industry isn't what it once was. Certifications that once held significant value are now virtually worthless. Lately, I have seen quite a bit of news surrounding design institutes. 
So here are a few summaries. In Guangzhou, the Boyi Design Institute, a subsidiary of Country Garden, has dissolved, leading to the collective unemployment of over 4,000 design institutes. In Shanghai, a design institute belonging to a state-owned enterprise under the prefix Bao also announced its dissolution. In Hangzhou, early this February, a local planning and design institute announced a suspension of work and production. Then, on January 24th, the architecture department of a major design institute in Guangdong also suspended its operations. Considering all this, it's actually remarkable that my friend's company has managed to survive this long. Although they're on the brink of closing, the fact that he and his company have sustained the business until now is truly commendable. As our conversation deepened, we found ourselves discussing matters on a more philosophical level. I asked him, did you used to complete drawings at an incredible speed, as per the client's demands? He confirmed, saying that once he even completed a set of drawings in just a week. I replied, Right, so it wasn't only the drawings that were done quickly. Buildings were going up at an incredible pace, too. Massive structures were being built, with one floor added every couple of weeks, sometimes even every week. Everything was done in a flash. But what was the rush? The work wasn't going anywhere. This led us to talk about the high turnover approach real estate companies often follow. Years back, a general assistant at Country Garden claimed proudly, Our high turnover isn't about defying nature. Instead, we achieve efficient turnover through scientific planning and meticulous management that respects the laws of nature, market dynamics, policies, and regulations. Hurry up, they said. Acquire land, secure loans, design, build, deliver, then move on to the next one. You could argue that this urgency comes from real estate companies being under financial pressure, but it might just reflect a more widespread, almost national sense of anxiety. Have you ever noticed people on a high-speed train standing at the door 10 minutes before the train arrives? Or on a plane, barely landed, but passengers are already crowding the exit eager to get off as fast as possible. They rush to get on, and they rush to get off. Yet, if you ask them what they're rushing toward, they don't really know. Maybe this is what we call East Asian speed. But following this line of thinking, if everything's simply about rushing to the end, isn't death the end we all share? If that's the case, why not skip the rest and go straight there? Why engage in all these pointless middle steps Regardless of what we do, the ultimate destination is the same. So why the anxiety? Like in my friend's industry, why not build slowly without rushing? Why not focus on perfecting the work, taking the time needed? What's the point of doing everything at once, only to be left with nothing more to do afterward? China's real estate company's crisis hit the home furnishing industry. Apain Home Furnishing closed 536 stores. The debt crisis affecting China's real estate companies has severely impacted many sectors, especially the home furnishings industry. Recently, Opain Home Furnishing, a leader in China's custom home furnishing market, released its third quarter report. This report revealed a significant double-digit decline in both revenue and net profit, and highlighted the reduction of 536 stores since the end of last year. On the evening of October 28th, Opain Home Furnishing disclosed its 2024 third quarter report, as reported by the Securities Times and the paper. The company reported an operating income of 13.879 billion yuan for the first three quarters, a year-on-year -year drop of 16.21%. Additionally, net profit attributable to shareholders reached 2.031 billion yuan, reflecting a decrease of 12.08% compared to the previous year. Focusing on just the third quarter, Alpine reported an operating income of 5.296 billion yuan, a decline of 21.21% from the same period last year. Net profit attributable to shareholders was recorded at 1.041 billion yuan, showing an 11.56% year-on-year decrease. Historically, Opian Home has been the top player in China's custom home furnishing industry, leading in both revenue and profit. 
Since its listing in 2017, the company has consistently demonstrated positive annual net profit growth. However, 2024 marked a significant shift as Opian faced a rare double-digit downturn in both revenue and profit. The company's semi-annual report attributed this trend to a combination of factors. The declining dividends from the real estate sector, shifting consumer preferences, a weakened consumer demand, and heightened industry competition, all of which are posing serious challenges for the custom home furnishing industry. In terms of sales channels, Oppian Home relies primarily on dealerships and bulk business. In the first three quarters, both channels experienced revenue declines, with one even shifting from growth to a downturn. Specifically, dealership revenues fell to 10.393 billion yuan, down 18.90% year-on-year, while the bulk business revenue declined to 2.348 billion yuan, down by 12.33%. In terms of store presence, by the end of September, Oppen Home reported 8,180 stores, a sharp reduction from 8,716 at the close of the previous year. Meanwhile, Diu Home Furnishing, another major player in the home furnishings industry, also suffered losses as a result of China's real estate crisis. On October 29th, Diu reported a significant financial downturn, announcing a total loss of 140 million yuan over the first three quarters, a year-on-year -year decrease of 115.89%, according to Red Star News. Diu's announcement attributed the profit decline largely to challenges stemming from the real estate industry. The macroeconomic environment has kept this year's real estate development index at a low level, weakening consumer demand for home renovations, building ceramics and sanitary products, and heightening market competition. Chinese people are more pessimistic about the future than ever. A joint research report recently released by Harvard University and Stanford University shows that the number of Chinese people who are optimistic about China's economic prospects has dropped sharply by 26% in the past 10 years. Whether it is the lower class people, the middle class, or the social elite, they are facing threats such as salary cuts, unemployment, declining quality of life, and bankruptcy. According to incomplete statistics, rights protection incidents in various parts of China have surged to more than 6,000 in the past two years. The study found that in 2004, nearly 60% of the respondents believed that their family's economic situation was better than five years ago, and they were optimistic about the prospects five years later. However, data from 2023 showed that only 38.8% of people felt that their economic situation had improved compared to the past, and the number of people who expected the future to be better fell to 47% a 26% drop from the peak in 2014. In addition, the proportion of people who are pessimistic about the future has risen from 2.3% in 2004 to 16% in 2023. Some analysts believe that the reckless actions of the Chinese Communist Party authorities are the direct cause of China's economic downturn. Current affairs commentator Fang Yuan said that the retrograde top-level design of China's economy has caused society to lose motivation and the economy to regress. It is difficult for people to plan and evaluate the future in an environment where orders change every day. How can they be optimistic about the future? Xia Tian, a professor at the Aiken School of Business at the University of South Carolina, said that after the epidemic, it is difficult for Chinese people to benefit from economic growth and accumulate wealth. Coupled with the bursting of the real estate bubble, the wealth of the whole population has shrunk rapidly, which has shattered the illusion that the economy will only get better. According to data from the Yi Yun Net under the US-based nonprofit organization Freedom House, China's protests in the second quarter of 2024 increased by 18% compared with the same period last year. From June 2022 to date, the website has recorded nearly 6,400 such incidents. Kevin Slotten, editor of Yi Yan Net, said that at least three quarters of the cases were caused by economic dissatisfaction. It has been observed that protests led by rural residents and blue-collar workers against land acquisition, demolition, 
and low wages have increased. In addition, the middle class has also started more protests due to the real estate crisis. How bad is China's economy? Every sector is declining. How bad is China's economy, given weak consumer spending, global resistance to Chinese dumped goods, and the fact that the real estate market has not yet stopped falling and stabilized? Beijing launched a package of stimulus measures in September, including interest rate cuts and reserve requirement ratio cuts, but the outside world doubts that these measures are enough to solve economic problems. This fall, the vast majority of global banks expect that China's economy will not achieve the 5% growth target set by the Communist Party of China. More than four-fifths of economists surveyed by Bloomberg predict that China's GDP growth will not reach 5% in 2024. And analysts, including Bank of America, question the fiscal and monetary policies of the Communist Party of China. At present, domestic deflationary pressures in China are rising, with new home prices falling the most since 2014 and consumer confidence falling to the lowest point in a year and a half. Beijing is still determined to implement the policy of high-end manufacturing and exports to promote economic recovery. But trade itself faces risks. Although exports have reached the highest level in nearly two years, the unit price of goods is falling, and foreign countries are increasingly wary of Beijing's new round of cheap goods shockwaves. There is a lot of debate about whether China's economy will fall into a decade of stagnation similar to Japan's. Every sector of China's economy is declining. Simply put, every sector of China's economy is in trouble. When the CCP lifted COVID restrictions and reopened the border at the end of 2022, people had optimistically predicted that Chinese people would engage in revenge shopping, dining out, and traveling, boosting consumption and the economy. But the boost was short-lived and soon disappeared against the backdrop of people's concerns about economic growth, falling house prices, unemployment, and income. As of September, Manufacturing activity has been in contraction since April 2023, with only three months as an exception. China's share of global manufacturing is as high as 30%. Its manufacturing trade surplus accounts for a large share of world GDP and has grown at an average rate of 2% in the past. China's manufacturing scale is larger than the combined manufacturing surpluses of Japan and Germany at their peak. Foreign governments worry that they can't resist the production growth rate of China's manufacturing industry. When China's production growth rate exceeds its own demand, or the global economic growth rate, the rest of the world can only be forced to scale down or even close industries. In addition, the scale of the CCP's industrial subsidy support is shocking, far exceeding that of other countries. Research by the Think Tank Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, found that China spends about 5% of its GDP on industrial subsidies, which is 10 times that of the United States, Brazil, Germany, and Japan. In industries such as semiconductors, steel, and aluminum, China's subsidies account for 80% to 90% of global subsidies. On the other hand, weak Chinese demand has also hurt the profits of foreign automakers from Stellantis NV to Aston Martin. At the same time, Global consumer brands from Starbucks to Estee Lauder have also found that sales in the Chinese market have plummeted, and Chinese consumers are increasingly looking to save money. The most telling indicator of fragile domestic confidence is that Chinese bank loans to the real economy shrank for the first time in 19 years this summer. Local governments, which are already cash-strapped and burdened with hidden debts, have also been dragged down by the housing market crash. Local land sales revenues have been falling at a record pace, making it more difficult to reverse the decline in budget spending when the economy is in desperate need of fiscal support. The youth unemployment rate rose for the second consecutive month in August, reaching the highest level this year. This unemployment rate indicator is a figurative indicator that was just put into use after the Chinese Communist Party changed its statistical caliber. International urban explorer Darman Richter told the British newspaper Express that the city has a post-apocalyptic feel that doesn't compare to anywhere else he's been. Even in Chernobyl, 
You tend to run into other tour groups or see the furniture rearranged by the countless photographers who visited before you, Mr. Richter said. Kangbashi District was utterly untouched, though, and walking through the silent streets was an unnerving experience.